you. <laughs> Thanks. I better not suck. New York City, this is great, man. I, I, this is, I love uh, living here and uh, doing shows here. And shit, the characters that we see in this city every single day. I was in a subway the other day, and there were these homeless guys singing a cappella. Happy as shit. They're homeless, singing a cappella, shaking a cup. I thought, how did these guys even meet? You know, it's, it's hard enough to form a band when you have a house and a phone and all that kind of shit. How did... How do you bump into other a cappella enthusiasts when you're out there on the homeless trail? You think you're just sitting around the shelter one day? I need some crack. Me too. Me three. Whoa. Huh. <laughs> people, uh, people talk to each other in this city in a way that just is just not normal. I was stopped at a light the other day. These two guys are unloading a truck. One guy looks at the other guy, he goes, Hakuna Matata, motherfucker, from the motherfucking Lion King. Hakuna Matata, motherfucker. What could have possibly preceded that part of the conversation? What kind of what's your favorite Disney cartoon song debate ends up with Hakuna Matata and motherfucker in the same sentence? That must have just built all day long, you know? Nah, that song sucks, man. I like the other one for that. They're under the sea, under the sea. Nah, man, Hakuna Matata. Don't be a fucking pussy, all right? It's under the sea, under the sea. Hakuna Matata, motherfucker. I was in a subway the other day. This guy screams across the tracks, screams across the tracks. He goes, yo, Monica. Yo, Monica. Yo, you got AIDS, yo. And I thought, wow, that's how they tell you? That Michael Moore is right. We have the worst fucking healthcare system. Up in Canada, they call you up probably, right? Maybe an email or something. They don't just hire a Puerto Rican kid to scream across the tracks. What kind of, what kind of shitty way is that to get health news? Yo, Greg, your cholesterol's high, son. Thank you, Hector. Thank you for taking time out from your busy schedule of Barbecuing on the shoulder of the Cross Bronx Expressway and bringing me up to speed on my health status. Yeah, the Puerto Rican Day Parade here in New York every summer. That's pretty exciting, right? Everybody's so proud of their ethnicity in this city. All over the country, people are so proud of what they are. What are you? What are you? But here in New York, we gotta have, we gotta have parades every two hours in the summer, you know? Everyone's proud. They gotta march to show how proud they are, you know? It's, it's like five hours of gridlock every weekend because it's the Albanian patron saint of cabbages high holy feast day or some shit. You got to sit there waiting forever. You're missing your appointments because five fat guys in sweatsuits have to walk a paper mache cabbage god up and down Fifth Avenue. The, the Puerto Rican Day Parade, though, is great. That is a great parade, the Puerto Rican Day Parade. But you never hear the good things. All you hear is the negative things. But what about the positive, empowering messages, particularly to women, that come from that parade? You know? Like, you're never too fat to wear a tube top. I think, I think that's a message that has to be heard. Because, you know, you always hear that girls feel bad about their bodies because they have to compare themselves to these anorexic actresses and everything, but there seem to be girls out there in that parade that don't, you know, they seem immune to that shit. I don't know. They're like, my shit looks good. My shit looks good, you know? And even if they're 300 pounds, they, they, they don't have to rule out the denim micro mini skirt. They, they hop on the back of their boyfriend's ninja motorcycle with their asshole hoisted up in the air. Thong is sticking out. It's not even one thong. It's like three thongs all knotted together. Yeah, it's an amazing, amazing city. People, people just, it, it's, it's so, so, people are so crazy and resilient. The plane crashes here in the Hudson River. Plane crashes in the Hudson. In the rest of the country, this is like a heroic deed, you know? Here in New York, like, what the fuck? Something, there's traffic, some dude. <laughs> Couldn't he have crashed in Connecticut or some shit? He's got a... Even after 9-11, we did shows almost right away. We started doing shows really quickly in the clubs around the city. In some parts of the city, there wasn't even electricity in some parts of the city. Yet the subway didn't even go there. But we started doing shows in these clubs because people seemed to want to come out. They seemed to want to laugh. And, and I, I couldn't believe it. You know, it was, it was right after 9-11. And there were already people in the audience's bachelorettes, bachelorette parties. And I thought, holy shit. You know, I, I, I never thought that I would be proud to see a pack of drunken Jersey girls with condoms on their heads. I thought, shit. 
They are never going to change the American way of life. They, they just knocked down the World Trade Center, but they couldn't stop this gaggle of squawking twats from, from, uh, from going on their penis-related paraphernalia shopping spree and buying their dick straws and condom hats and their a hard man is good to find t-shirts and, and, you know, and, and piling into that limo. We're going, Gina. It's your day. It's your special day. We are going in the city. We are going in the fucking city. It's your special day. I don't care what those fucking Mexicans did. We are going into the city. You know, when I travel around a lot, and I, sometimes I, I can't tell the different kinds of sense of humor. When people are too nice, I don't know if they're fucking with me or if... If they know me from the roast and they're trying to roast me. I, I, you know, I was checking in a hotel recently and the girl behind the counter says, we need to get you in a handicap room. <laughs> I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> Zinger. But it turned out she was trying to hook me up with a bigger room. Like in this hotel, the handicap room is like the big room. That's how you know you're staying in some quality places. <laughs> when the handicap room is their version of the presidential suite, you know. Your room is ready, sir. But you know, I didn't really appreciate it enough at the time, so every time I walked past her, I felt like I had to really show some appreciation. So I'm like, thank you, thank you, what a room, thanks. Really is, everything you said it would be in more. I never imagined that one day I might shit with my feet three inches off the ground. <laughs> Very nice, that little, Waist height peephole is very helpful. Oh, hey, uh, these balls don't seem threatening at all. Come on in. Oh, are you housekeeping? Come on in. How come when you put the do not disturb on the door, that doesn't seem to apply to the housekeeping? Or the housekeeping, housekeeping, I have the fucking do not disturb sign on housekeeping. Who else is it intended for? Pretty much you were the only person I thought might swing by. I'm in a fucking hotel. It's not like I invited a whole crew of people to come over and then change my mind at the last minute. Nah, you know what? On the other hand, I got a bunch of old friends coming over at 7 a.m. You know what? Maybe not. I saw uh, one of those Hummers, those giant Hummer cars with handicap tags on it. Yeah. I thought, wow, I never realized that being an asshole was technically a handicap. But who knows? <laughs> when, I, when I was in the handicap room, I slipped, I actually slipped and almost fell in the handicap shower. How ironic would that have been to become handicapped while staying in a handicap room? Sorry, sir, you'll never walk again. Well, ordinarily I'd be upset, but I'm all hooked up with a place to crash for the next couple days, so I'm pretty cool with it. You know, it takes the edge off a little bit. We're gonna hear a lot about energy policy. We need to cut our dependence on foreign oil. Cut our dependence on foreign oil. How do you think we're gonna do that? Drive small cars? You think we're gonna drive small cars in America? Of course not. We can't, we can't do it. We'll never drive small cars. We can't do it. Because we have big, fat kids. <laughs> big, fat, fucking waddling weebles. Have you, have, have you been to Disney World in the last 10 years and seen these bags of shit wheezing and waddling? <laughs> all fucking red-faced and sweaty. You're, you're not supposed to be winded when you're nine and you're, and, and you're on flat ground. I, I, I don't care how excited you are to get to the snow cone. You shouldn't be like, ah. Like, they, they, these little fat fucks, they act like they're working through the desert, you know? Just, oh, is that a mirage? Is that a, I really want cotton candy. Is that a vendor of cotton candy? A purveyor? What kind of child says vendor? Is that a purveyor of fine sugary treats? One hopes that that is a vendor <laughs> and not a figment of my eight-year-old imagination. These fat children, God bless them, holy shit. They don't even walk anymore, these kids. You see these little fat kids in parks, they don't even walk. They just come gliding by on those Healy wheels. Fat kids on wheels, is that a good idea, do you think? Kids don't burn any calories in the modern world. Now we put wheels on them, what the fuck? 
Why don't we just bolt the wheels directly into their spines? This way they don't even have to sit up. They can lay flat on their back and we can roll them around from snack to snack. All they do is fucking eat and snack and fatten up by the second. I mean, you can't fight it. You can't fight it. People blame the parents, right? It's the parents' fault. I used to blame parents for that kind of shit until I became a parent. And now I blame someone else. Because you can't, you can't battle the American junk food industry. They have cartoons and movies and all kinds of shit that are sponsored by their double sugar smacked crack pops or whatever the fuck they sell for these kids. You think once a kid tastes one of these things, you're going to get them to eat celery sticks after that? Are you kidding? They just watched a movie where this candy treat makes robots fly. You think you're, you you're going to get them on the celery sticks? Come on, eat the celery. It's good. It's got fiber in it. Yeah, I know those make people fly, but these will keep you from getting polyps in your 60s and your rectum. Come on. Can't you be a little more forward-thinking, you fucking eight-year-old? Grow up a little. Eat these carrots. There's beta carrots. It's good for your eyes. You don't want to get short-sighted later on. Believe me, it's really a problem. You got a, you got a better chance getting a crackhead to switch to eggnog at that point. <laughs> this whole generation of kids is fucked up. I don't know what we've done to them. Every one of them's got breathing disorders and allergies to everything. And uh, fuck, they're all on pills. And When I was a kid, if you had asthma, people beat the shit out of you. Because, because it was unusual. Nobody had it, so people picked on you. Now, every kid's got some sort of apparatus and you know helmets and pills and all kinds of shit. They pick on the kid that doesn't. Hey, check out the nose breather. Ha! Why don't you walk up some stairs, faggot? <laughs> peanut allergies. When did the peanut become the most toxic substance known to man. Have you tried going anywhere near a school with peanut butter? Holy shit, they look at you like you slathered it on your cock and went skipping across. <laughs> Which one of you hot little motherfuckers want some peanut butter? I got jelly, I got jelly, you just have to dig for it a little. Come on, where, hey, where are you going? What are you allergic? Or ethanol, right? That'll cut our dependence on foreign oil. Ethanol. Ethanol is a load of shit that's being jammed down our throats by these corn farming lobbyists. It doesn't work. It takes two gallons of regular oil to make each gallon of ethanol. Meanwhile, in Brazil, 80% of their energy comes from sugarcane. 80% of the energy that they use in Brazil comes from sugarcane. How did we fall behind the Brazilians on this? The Brazilians, their last technological innovation was pussy waxing, for Christ's sake. And not, not, not that that's not awesome. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm all for it. I'm just, I'm just saying, technologically speaking, it's not that advanced. I mean, I guess technically it'll, it'll make you more aerodynamic. But that's not, that's not going to cut down on fuel consumption unless you drive with your pussy out the window, you know. I'm getting better mileage lately. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm getting old as we all are, I guess, but I'm, I'm feeling it lately. This is a business. It's, this business kills you as you get older. It's not a, you don't see a lot of old people on television. They're, you know, we don't see them anymore unless they're in some bladder control commercials. You know, they're all, that's like our vision of the future. You're either dying in some life alert thing or just worried about your bladder. If I can only stop pissing so much, I just piss. Uh, they're always like shuffling off somewhere. What a fucking miserable future. You just don't see old people on TV. That, that's one of the reasons I think John McCain looked so creepy during the campaign. He's not that old, but we're just not used to seeing people like that on television. It looked weird. You had cool hip Obama, and then this angry little bridge troll. It's like, ah, ah, ah. He's dragging his fucking club foot around. He's a candidate of change. I'm going to change. I'm a maverick. The maverick. I'm going to change everything. What are you going to change, John? You're 105 years old. What was he going to change? Dinner at 4 o'clock for the whole country, maybe? You know, A quick, quick episode of Murder, She Wrote, and Off to Bed. He couldn't believe he was losing. He couldn't believe it. Did you see how unglued he almost came during the last debate? Holy shit. He came this close to going, he's black. <laughs> what the fuck, really? How am I losing? 
I'm a fucking war hero. I'm losing to a 40-year-old Nigerian or some shit, whatever the hell he is. His name rhymes with Osama. How the fuck am I losing? I'm so furious. I want to throw my hands in the air, but I can't. This is as high as they go because I am a war hero. <laughs> It's, a, it's amazing the role that race played. Race was such a huge thing in that, that, that election. Holy shit. I don't know. Race, race is so important to everybody, it seems. I, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't give a shit about people's race. I don't, I, don't, I don't care at all. I don't even... I mean, I just go by weight, you know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I'm pretty firm about my rules in that area, but... Because, you know, people are so sensitive. Even when people don't mean to be racist, apparently they're racist. People get in trouble all the time. Although there are people that claim not to be racist that actually are. People tell me at least once a week that they're not racist. I hear people all the time, dude, I'm not racist. I'm not a racist. As soon as someone tells you they're not racist, that always means they're about to say the most racist shit you ever heard in your life. I'm not racist. But these fucking Mexicans, dude, holy shit. They come swimming over here all covered in herpes and shit. That's just what I read. I'm not racist. I'm saying it's just something. I'm, not, I'm all right with it. I'm not racist. I got a friend who's Mexican. Filipino, I think. I, whatever. It's fucking... But then there are people that genuinely aren't that I guess... Hillary Clinton got in trouble during the campaign because she said that white people wouldn't support Barack Obama during a general election. White people wouldn't support Barack Obama. And that sounded like like something a Democrat shouldn't say, so she started using code words for white people, which was 50 times worse. Because instead of saying white people, she started saying hard-working Americans. <laughs> hard-working Americans are not gonna support Barack Obama. You know what I mean? Hard-working Americans, you know, the ones that don't run fast and don't have giant cocks. Am I... <laughs> Am I putting too fine a point on this? I'm getting old. It's depressing as shit. The president's a couple years older than me. Do you know how much of a fucking loser that makes me feel like? Seriously. When you see people your age are accomplishing real shit. He's out there trying to decide what to do about North Korea. I'm, I'm trying to decide whether to start dyeing my beard or not. I'm like, fuck, I don't know. What should I do? You know who's got to feel terrible about this election? Uh... Barack Obama's brother. He's got a half-brother who's like a homeless guy in, in Kenya. This guy's... Every politician has that fucked-up asshole brother. You know, Barack's got his brother, Bill Clinton, had Roger Clinton, Jimmy Carter, of course, had Billy Carter, and uh, Jeb Bush has, has George Bush. And... Uh, that's, a, that's a cute one. That's an adorable little one. I'm not, uh... I hopefully not, we won't be talking much about George Bush anymore to this special. But this is the last couple things I'm going to say. I am, I am happy as shit to be rid of him. First of all, I don't even understand. Even if you agreed with his policies, I don't see how anybody could have liked that guy. And then his bullshit and his fake character. I'm a cowboy, man. Look at me. I'm a cowboy. Mission accomplished, man. Hey, have a rap, down. Fucking asshole. He, he grew up in Connecticut. He went to Andover Prep School. He was a cheerleader at Yale. He was a fucking cheerleader. Hey, man, I'm a cowboy, man. Mission accomplished. He was less of a cowboy than that guy in the village people, for Christ's sake. He goes, he, he goes up to Angela Merkel. She's a world leader, the leader of Germany. Walks up behind her. He'd never met her before. Gives her a little shoulder rub. A little shoulder rub. How sexist and insulting is that? What kind of frat boy douchebag move? Gives her a little shoulder rub. You know, you know, with a German woman, you gotta shit on him first. You gotta, you gotta take a little shit on him. I, I only know what I've seen on the internet, but you gotta appreciate people's cultures. My favorite moment was that shoe throwing incident. He gets a, he gets a shoe thrown at him. That was the most amazing moment because normally in America, we're very patriotic people. And even if you hated the president, if someone attacked him, if someone threw a shoe at him, people would have freaked out. But this was fucking unreal. I mean, think about that. Some greasy foreigner in a, like a Borat polyester suit, you know, it's a big, bushy, cliche, cartoon character, angry Arab guy, mustache, ta take, takes off his, his camel shit cake shoe and... <laughs> yell some cliche insult, you know, you American shit pig fucker, you know, and, and throws his half a sandal at our United States president, and even the biggest redneck in America was like, man, that was funny as shit, man. 
God damn, that was some funny shit, man. <laughs> getting, uh, getting divorced again, and, um, you know, a lot of people... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> a lot of, uh... A lot of people say, well, you know, marriage, that's the problem. It's too much divorce, and it should be a sacred institution. It should be between a man and a woman. And, you know, first of all, it's certainly not sacred. And second of all, if a man wants to marry another man, you know, good luck with it. I mean, holy shit. You don't choose what you are. You don't choose whether you're gay or not. You just are what you are. How can you discriminate against someone for being what they are? Like, I don't choose to be attracted to women. I don't choose it. I happen to be attracted to women. It sucks. You know? <laughs> It means every 10 years or so, I got to give all my shit away and start from scratch. I don't, I don't know what they are. Although there is, you know, there is a, a, a level of gayness that seems to be on purpose. You know, at that point, it's probably okay to laugh at that. I mean, I think. I was on a plane the other day, and the flight attendant is a guy. The flight attendant walks up next to me with the cart, and he's like, Snack, sir! <laughs> Holy shit, that's got to be a choice, no? <laughs> you could definitely scale that back a little teeny tiny bit. Snack! <laughs> but then I realized maybe it's because you got to say that shit over and over in an airplane. If you had to say snacks over and over and over again, it'd make anyone sound pretty over the top. Because this guy just had to push the cart and say that 400 times. Snack, sir. Snack, snack. Snack, sir. Snacks. Look, I have snack, snack. Sir, for you a snack, man. It's a snack, snack. Snack! Snack, 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 snack. Snack, snack for you, snack. Snack. Snack, snack, snack. Let me suck your dick, sir, please. Please let me suck your dick. Please. Just the tip a little bit. Sir, please. No. Snack then. Like somebody, uh, somebody. Snack. So, uh, somebody asked me, you know, if I would care. I have three sons, and somebody asked me if I would care if one of my sons was gay. How gay? I mean, I mean, if, if one of them turns out to be gay and wants to marry a dude, that should be his right, you know, and I would support that. But, yeah, I would support that. But if I get on an airplane and my son walks up behind me going, Snacks! Snack, Dad! Snacks! You know, we could dial that down a little tiny bit. That's all I'm saying. That's behavior. You know what I mean, if he wants to bring his new husband to Thanksgiving dinner. Great. But if they start fisting the turkey and, uh, you know, I might be like, all right. I'm kidding. Of course, obviously, I wouldn't give a shit if one of my sons was gay because I'd still have two normal ones. You know what I mean? Two, uh, two normal, decent sons with a shot of getting into heaven. So what do I give a shit? I, I have three sons, and it's, it's not, it's, it's the greatest thing in the world, but it's also, you know, it's, it's rough sometimes, it's tough, you know, and I, I was having this conversation with somebody, they go, I know, because I have a dog, you know, my dog's a lot like my kid. People with dogs say shit like that all the time. Yeah, I don't have, my dog is like my kid, my dog is like my kid, and you got to play along and be like, hi. It's really, really, your dog is like your kid, really? How fucking insulting is that? First of all, no one has a dog because they were too drunk to pull out, that's the first thing. <laughs> And you can't, you try not to have a favorite when you have sons or kids, you know, I, you can't have a favorite. I, you can't let them know if you do. And I don't, I treat my main son and the other two <laughs> exactly the same way. I hope they never feel the need to be in the closet. That's the main thing, you know, that's because everybody knows those guys that are just so in the closet and they won't come out. And it's not like I care. It's not like I care about people. It's just that. It's just that it gets exhausting to have to play along with that charade all the time. I have this friend Tommy. Every time I see him, he's like, boy, that Jessica Alba's a piece of ass, huh? <laughs> boy, you know what I'd do to her? Gargle her ball bag, probably, Tommy, if she had one, but 
Otherwise, probably something else. I saw these, uh, these two older women were looking at a gay couple from a distance, and the one woman looks at her friend, she goes, she says, uh, with my son, as long as he's nice and he's happy, he could have sex with a kangaroo, and I wouldn't bat an eye. That's, that's very uh, progressive of her, isn't it? <laughs> to, uh, to equate homosexuality with kangaroo fucking. Whatever kind of crime against nature he's involved in, I'm fine with it. What do you mean you wouldn't bat it? If you walk in and someone's fucking a kangaroo, you're gonna notice that, holy shit. Even if they're not fucking it, even if they're just standing there with it, that's gonna be noticeable. Oh wow, how'd you get it here even, you know? You're gonna have some questions. Hey, why would you fuck a kangaroo when there's so many more manageable marsupials? Like the koala bear, that's the most, that's the most fuckable animal right there. The koala bear. You know, I said that once on stage and a guy in the audience goes, yeah, but they got those claws. Like he's, uh, he's thinking of reasons not to fuck it. Like the, the fact that it's a koala bear didn't in and of itself end the conversation in his head. All right, I like what you're saying. What about the claws? <laughs> you just got to work around the claw issue. You know, if we can tackle that, then you, you're all good. You know what? Some koala fucking mittens. That's all you need. <laughs> you know, you head down to the pet shop. Hey, my good man. <laughs> what sort of, what sort of koala fucking equipment do you guys sell here? <laughs> what sort of, say a fellow was looking to do some koala fucking. What kind of... <laughs> Where's the koala fucking accoutrement department? <laughs> I would say the fucking the koala is, is, a good, is a good choice though, because uh, cause of the eucalyptus, right? They, uh, they're all covered in eucalyptus. They eat eucalyptus all day long, so their cock has to be all eucalyptus-y. <laughs> or, or, if you were, or if I were a guy doing this bit, I would say they're... <laughs> If I wasn't a closeted gay guy, clearly. How the, how the hell did cock pop in my... I've never said cock in that joke before and it just popped. You know, when you're fucking the koala and it's cock is in your ass. I, <laughs> DVD extras. The koala is the most fuckable animal because of the because uh, of the eucalyptus. They eat eucalyptus all day long. So if you if you fuck the koala, your cock would probably get all eucalyptusy, you know. And uh, and then uh, and then maybe you uh, no, then maybe you meet you meet a girl with a sore throat, you know. And it's uh, it's win win. It's so. Uh, it's so rare that an act of bestiality ends on an up note like that. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know anything about, uh, about women, obviously. <laughs> I really, I don't, I, I don't know, I don't understand some things. Even some very basic things. I saw a girl peeing on the sidewalk the other day. That's a New York moment for you. Just fuck it, I'm gonna pee right here. She wasn't even homeless or anything, she was just lazy, I guess. Just, Sitting there with her friend, she just peed on the side. I walk by and there's this girl peeing on the side. Not a little, like an adult. Peeing on the sidewalk. And then I noticed from the corner of my eye, I realized that the, the, the stream of urine seemed to be coming from higher up than I would have thought. And that's when I realized, embarrassingly enough, that I'm not even sure where girls pee from. <laughs> you know, I'm not exactly sure. Talk about a failure of the public education system. You'd think I would have picked up, I'm not even sure exactly where they pee from, and I've been peed on by women, you know? But, but I'm, usually, uh, I'm usually focused on other things, like, holy shit, how did I get this fucked up, you know? Or, wow, Puerto Rican girls sure eat a lot of asparagus. But I... I do you remember the first time you saw a vagina as a dude? Holy shit. When you're a kid and you see a real adult vagina for the first time, like in a magazine, it freaks the shit out of you. I found like a Hustler magazine and there was this girl spread eagled 
And I'm looking at it with my friends. I was like nine years old. That is the most horrifying thing you've ever seen in your life. I looked at that, I was like, fuck, this girl's been injured. Holy shit. Why are they taking her picture? Somebody get her to the hospital. She needs to be stitched up or something's got to be trimmed or what the fuck is it? Did she sit on a landmine? What is going on here? There's such a youth-oriented culture, you know? It's like, party when you're young, and then later you taper off, and you just kind of fucking miserably die and fade away, you know? It should be the other way around. Like, I think the drinking age should be 40. I think you should start drinking at 40, because that's when you need it. You should save it up, build a foundation, and then get fucked up when you need it. Because, you know, when you're young, life is fine. Later on is when it gets fucking difficult. Like, my life is so much harder now than it was when I was younger. I want to be fucked up now all the time, you know? But I can't, because now I'm an alcoholic, and I can't drink at all. Because when I do, I end up snorting crystal meth off a switchblade at some after-hours bar thinking, shit, I'm going to be late for my flight in the morning. Except it's like two in the afternoon and the flight was six weeks ago. And you're like, holy shit, how did that happen? You know, save it up. Because, you know, the things... The things you do when you're, when you're young are not that bad anyway. Parties are fun anyway. It's the things later in life that suck. Parent-teacher conferences, that's not so easy. Parent-teacher conferences, finding out your kid's a half a tard. That'd be, uh, that'd be a lot easier with some fat rails and a few shots of Jack in you. Hey, what's that, he can't read? Well, maybe he's not a reader. <laughs> Reading's not for everybody. Maybe he's just frustrated by the fact that reading seems like such a permanent form of communication. Maybe he's a, maybe he's a visionary. Maybe he thinks the thought should be conveyed directly instead of being downloaded in this weird hieroglyphic transcription. Or sex, you know, he always... Go out, get drunk to get laid or save it up for later. Later on is when you need the chemicals, you know, later. When you've been grudgingly pushing your semi-hard cock into the same woman for 25 years, that's when you need the beer goggles, I would think, at that point. Not when you're 18 or 19 and everything's more or less where it's supposed to be. It's later on. Let's face it, fucking old people's disgusting. People always groan at that. It's disgusting to fuck old people. Even if you are an old person, you're still fucking another old person. <laughs> fucking old people is disgusting. I know because I used to work in a nursing home. And it's, <laughs> it's disgusting. And it's, not, it's worse for women because now with Viagra, guys are going to want to have sex forever. Can you imagine? Laying there, looking up at the hollowed out shell of the man you married, some broken down old dude with his sweaty liver spotted head just wheezing and... His, Big bushy eyebrows, he's looking down at you, his fucking saggy man tits are flopping around with tufts of gray hair, smacking you in the face like, like two Santa Claus beards tickling your chin as you, as he grinds his bony pelvis in you. Wouldn't that be a nice time for some ecstasy? Wouldn't that be a nice time to start rolling a little bit then, you know? You know, like, you know, it's just, shit. Well, this ain't bad at all. His two foot scrotum feels like the tongue of God on my thigh. Uh, what do I know about anything? I don't, I don't know much about women, obviously. Especially attractive women. They have a different sense of the world, you know? A lot of times they don't even understand that the world's much easier, or at least that the world bends over backwards. I was talking to this girl, and she says, you know, you should just go to Europe. You should just go to Europe. It's so great there, you know? You just meet people. So You just meet people, and they show you around. You know, guys on their motorcycles will show you around. Like, you meet people. Really? Really? Is that how it plays out? Is that how it's going to play out for me, do you suppose, really? I've, I've been to Europe. I don't remember any private tours. I was, I was standing on a lot of sidewalks. I would have pulled up on their vest. Hey, come on! Thank you, Giuseppe. The city is beautiful. I was uh, talking to this friend of mine, and she said, you know, it's really hard for women in a lot of, in the, in, you know, in the workplace in a lot of cases, you know, and there's a lot of discrimination. A, she, said, she was pointing all these jobs out, and there's no, no very few women in this field, not pilots, there are very few women pilots. And, uh, and that's true. There's not a lot of women pilots. I noticed I was on a plane the other day, and the pilot came on, and it was a woman. It was a woman's voice. She goes, this is your captain, Captain Johnson. And everybody on that plane, men and women, we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Seriously, put the real pilot on. <laughs> Holy shit, this is a big fancy machine you're driving, Buttercup. This ain't some kind of Barbie's dream car you're dicking around with. 
But there are jobs that are hard for men to get too, you know? Bikini waxing jobs for dudes. That's not easy. Damn, here for the job. Pussy waxing or something, what is it? I like pussies, I like wax, I figure, you know, mix them up. I got my tools in a truck, you want me to start right now? There's a uh, Puerto Rican uh, woman who's been nominated to be on the Supreme Court. That's pretty exciting for a lot of people, not anyone here today, but a lot of people <laughs> get excited. A lot of people get excited about that. I was talking to this guy, this fucking asshole, and the guy says, I couldn't believe the shit that was coming out of his mouth. He says, you know what, I don't know that I'm comfortable with a woman on the Supreme Court. I mean, I don't like when women get jobs like that. You know, I don't like women judges. You know, I just, I mean, it's not, it's just like, you know, what if they have to make a real important decision and they're having their period or something, you know, and they're like cranky or whatever, and, you know, that's, that's, people's lives are on the line. How fucking ignorant is that? Is that the most ignorant shit you ever heard in your life if she's having her period? Yeah, it's the most ignorant shit I ever heard. She's got to be in her 50s. It's on her period. This woman is, she's definitely been through menopause by now. She's, she's almost as good as a dude now. She's got to be dry as a bone down there. What kind of ignorant asshole? It's like a desert. She might as well have balls. Why, why would you think she wouldn't make a good judge? It's like a guy because there's no more bleeding. When they named her, uh, you know, she, to the court, she said that getting uh, nominated to the Supreme Court was, was the most humbling experience of her life. Humbling. People always say that kind of thing at the wrong time. You know, humbling. This was so humbling. Well, they actually mean exactly the opposite. Oh, yeah, having the President of the United States call you up personally and ask you to be on the Supreme Court, that's a real kick in the face, huh? Holy shit. <laughs> that really took me down a notch. Why don't you shit down my throat, Mr. President? I did a show once and this super hot girl came up to me after and she goes, I really, I want you to call me. Give me a call. And she gave me her business card. I was psyched, you know. I thought, holy shit, this is nice. You know what I mean? Take the card and I looked at it and it said escort on it. Escort. That was humbling. <laughs> I mean, on a lot of levels. Because you're like, shit, obviously she's not that into me, you know. And, uh, and also she's got a business card and I don't. <laughs> you know, what kind of, what kind of, career-oriented hooker walking around with a business card. Holy shit, I can't get a business, I can't get it together enough to head down to the printers and get a business card made. She somehow has time between buying cocaine and nipple salves or whatever she needs. You know, ointments and all the gels. They always need, they need gels. She has a, a hooker with a business card. You think she throws it in the fishbowl at Fuddruckers hoping to win a free lunch for the whole whorehouse? Desiree, I want us appetizers. We're all going to... Desiree, what... don't fill up on cock. We have a free lunch coming. You're going to fill up on cock? <laughs> don't, don't fill up on cock. <laughs> Texting is a technology that I never would have anticipated catching on the way it did. Huh? Holy shit. I tried to fight it, now I'm just like everybody else. I'm walking around like a crack-addled praying mantis 24 hours a day. Shit. Hey, shit. Hey, what are you up to? What are you doing? Oh, nothing, just uh, sitting here having lunch with you. Oh, ha, ha, ha LOL. Uh, that's fine, what are you gonna order, LOL? LOL, how fucking, are we really as happy as a country? Are people really laughing out loud as often as they say that? Because that would be one fucking psychotic nation if we're like, oh, hey, just having lunch. Ha, 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 ha. See you later, not if I see you first. Ha, 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 ha. Texting is such a, I was, the other day I was making plans with my friend, we're texting each other back and forth for like 45 minutes. 45 minutes texting each other back and forth. Finally I thought, fuck, if there was only a way I could speak to this person, <laughs> that would really move this along nicely. Holy shit. Why can't they invent some sort of voice sending machine to replace this primitive thumb typer contraption? The worst thing about texting is I get involved in too many different text exchanges with too many different people and I end up sending the wrong text to the wrong person. That is embarrassing, right? I end up telling my mother to pick up an eight ball because I'm gonna fuck the shit out of her later. <laughs> and she's like, dude, you can't get wood on blow. You're so full of shit. <laughs> hey, how would you know, mom? 
and it's only a psychological thing anyway, and it's when I do too much, and you know what, maybe if you didn't discourage me at everything I ever did, I wouldn't become such a drug addict in the first place. Frown. You ever have text sex with anybody? Holy shit, that's gotten ridiculous. People are so into that shit. You meet somebody, you know, three seconds later, you're on the phone, you got your cock in one hand, a thesaurus in the other. Oh, shit. I need another word for throbbing. What, how else would you put throb? Sucks when you're not as good at it as the other person, and they're like sending you these super hot erotica novels. You're like, yeah, I'd do that to you too, LOL. Back at ya, LOL. But it does make it easier to get sexual with people. You couldn't do that back in the old days, you know, like carrier pigeon. <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Sit there jerking off for three months till it comes back. <laughs> uh. I saw a commercial the other day for a car with rain-sensing windshield wipers. Rain-sensing windshield wipers. One-sixth of the world's population is starving. But we have scientists working hard to make sure that we don't have to do this. <laughs> Was anyone not satisfied with the existing windshield wiper triggering systems? People driving around, dude, I can't be doing all kinds of twists and turns and extensions and all kinds of moves here. I'm just trying to text and drive. I can't be, I can't be expected to look through the windshield and determine for myself whether it's raining. I'm not some kind of fucking meteorologist. <laughs> I quit uh, drinking and all that, uh, <laughs> finally. You have to eventually, if, just the, the dumb shit that happens, the wall punching and mangled stupid fingers and. <laughs> I realize that's a little specific, maybe. <laughs> you know, from all the drunk bowling. I punch walls, I fucked up my hand. Every, every drunk asshole punches a wall at some point in his life, right? It's never, there's never a happy ending. There's no surprise. Why, why, why would, what kind of, there's never like, oh, it's softer than I would have expected. This is actually, turned out not as bad. Nothing good comes of it. You never break through the wall and find a missing child on the other side. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, one time they wouldn't let me get on a plane because they said I was too drunk. Too drunk to get on a plane. Do you know how fucked up you have to be for someone to look at you and go, sorry, sir, you are too drunk to sit. <laughs> and I was actually pissed off. Well, fuck, I can sit. I can sit down. I'm good at sitting. <laughs> Want to look for missing children over here behind the wall? <laughs> oh, Lord. Is anyone happily married? Is, any, is anyone actually happily married? It just, it just doesn't seem... I, don't, I know a couple of people that seem pretty happily married, but for the most part, like, especially if you watch television, like the image of marriage in America, holy shit. You watch these sitcoms, it's like... It's just these, these whiny, sex-starved liars, you know, and, and the wives are like these bitchy twats and... It's like, please, can I have some sex? It's my birthday. <laughs> Slow down, tiger. <laughs> what about the lawn? <laughs> there are more whipped men on television than there were on the Amistad. It's a fucking <laughs> miserable existence. Did you see? Did you see this guy that got hit by lightning? He got hit by lightning seven times. He'd been hit by lightning seven times and survived. And then he killed himself over a woman. God couldn't kill this guy. <laughs> Send in the experts. There was a guy. There was, <laughs> this is... There was a, how about that guy jumped off the carnival cruise ship, jumped off, a, off the cruise ship, jumped off the balcony of a cruise ship into the ocean because he got into a fight with his wife about his bar tab. So he jumped into the ocean and drowned. That story sounds insane. 
to anyone that's never been married. Because I swear to God, I'm not saying this for fact. When I heard that story, I thought, yeah, shit, I could see exactly how something like that. You're drunk. I'm on vacation. You're fucking drunk. I'm on fucking vacation. You're going to be hung over tomorrow. You're supposed to take ice sculpting classes on the Lido deck. If you don't shut the fuck up, I'm going to jump off this goddamn balcony. You don't have the balls. <laughs> even, uh, even, even Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, they seem to be pretty happy together. And even he has to play that role of cliche, stereotyped, douchebaggy, loser husband. You know, Ooh, I don't know. You'll have to ask Michelle. <laughs> Holy shit. If I heard the number of times he would say during the campaign, like, well, oh, she's the smart one. Really. That's really what he thinks, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we don't. She's the smart one in the family. I mean, I'm president of the United States of America, but I mean, she really is the one that... <laughs> you know, they asked him during the campaign if he quit smoking. They said, what, what happened with your smoking? He said, well, I made a deal with Michelle that uh, I could run for president if I quit smoking. <laughs> so, uh, you know how that played out. <laughs> really, really? You really think that's how it went down? Really? He had to ask for permission. He had to make a little deal with wifey poo to run for fucking president of the United States. Please, Michelle, please. I really, really want to be president. I know that doesn't sound like him. I'm doing a character. I turn him into like fucking Bullwinkle or something. Oh, please. I really want to be president, Michelle. You're the smart one, please. What about the smoking, Barack? If that's true, how would he ever possibly negotiate with other world leaders? You'll halt the development of your nuclear program immediately. Really? Did your wife tell you to say that? <laughs> Look at me, I'm smoking. I love to smoke. Oh, it's delicious to smoke. Should I just talk to Michelle directly or do you have any fucking balls at all left? <laughs> you pussy whip faggot. Let me ask you. Do you want to... Should we talk nuclear shit or... Uh... I love smoking. You know what I tell my wife? She told me to quit smoking. I cut her fucking tits off. That's what I would do. What do I know? Can you talk? Is this tonight date night for you? Do you need to, uh, do you need to go see, uh, I don't know. <laughs> what the? In my country, we don't have date movies, you know. Something with Sandra Bullock, I guess, or, uh, Matthew McConaughey. Maybe he's got some movie on his 51st dates or something. I don't know. What the fuck? I'm normally fucking on my harem. I don't know what you do on date night. It's probably something like that. So the economy has been... Uh, the economy's been uh, terrible, of course. And, uh, but you know what? There's some good things about the economy being so bad. I, people are, ke are keeping things in perspective for the first time ever. It's unbelievable. People saying things like, you know what? I hate my job, but in this economy, I'm happy just to have my job. A lot of people don't have their jobs, you know? I didn't get a raise this year, but in this economy, I'm happy just to, just to have what I have. A lot of people don't have that. I have a shitty car, but in this economy, I'm happy I still have my car. A lot of people don't even have cars in this economy. I got raped in the ass last night. <laughs> but in this economy, I was happy just to get raped in the ass. A lot of people aren't getting raped in the ass out there anymore. It's good to get raped. They set all my shit on fire, too, which... I thought it was unnecessary, but in this economy, I was happy just to have shit to burn, you know? Just to, the fact that I was raped in the ass and had all my shit burned, I was pretty, in this economy, I was pretty happy to have that. A lot of my friends, you know, have a lot of money, and they were calling me up, you know, hey, did you lose a lot of money in the stock market? Did you get cream? But I've had a lot of personal problems in the last few years, so I don't have any money at all. <laughs> so they're calling me up, I'm like, no, actually, I have exactly the same amount of money now as I did when all this shit started. Turns out investing all my money in tequila and strippers wasn't such a bad policy after all, you know. Uh, I, uh, this, is a, this is a very, very good time to be a fuck-up. That's all I'm saying. You know, the expectations are pretty low. The Obama administration, they, uh, they lifted the uh, ban on embryonic stem cell research, which uh, I didn't... Uh, I, I wasn't even sure what embryonic stem cell research was. I just knew the Christian groups hated it, so I thought it had to be awesome. And 
I, I, you know, I, I looked it up a little bit. It turns out that embryonic stem cells, there's stem cells that come from human embryos, and they can be used to cure diseases like Parkinson's and cancer. And these, these Christian groups were blocking the use all the time because they say, well, these stem cells come from a life. They represent life. Life is being destroyed. There's a miracle of life there. A miracle of life. It's just a couple of cells. It's just a human egg, a few cells that's been touched by just a teeny, tiny little bit of jizz. It's just a little bit of jizz on there. That's all you put a little, just a little jizz. It's just jizz. It's nothing miraculous. It's jizz. I have shitloads of it sitting around my apartment right now. It's just, it's, it's just jizz. That's all. It's not something special. It's not a miracle. It would be a miracle if the jizz could make a baby all by itself. If I get back to my apartment and there's a baby crawling out of my wastebasket, all all covered in tissues and shit. I'm like, whoa! I better, I better take little jizz baby here to get a, a baptized or something, because clearly these Christians are onto something. Maybe I better take little spunky. I better take my little, I better take little man goo here. Down to, I wouldn't call him man goo. Probably that'd be a little too on the nose. Something else, you know. You know, these stem cells, I mean, they could use them to cure diseases like Parkinson's. Michael J. Fox has Parkinson's. I've done a lot of shows for this guy. He's awesome, you know? He is way cooler than any fucking baby I've ever met, ever. Is that person sleeping? There's seriously a guy sleeping. Is that a guy I can't even tell? Oh, there's a dude sleeping, dead center. That is fucking great. What's up, man? Are you all right? Are you all right? How's things? Did you get dragged in off the street? What the fuck? Why do you look angry? Are you all right? Are you okay? Why are you so tired? It doesn't strike you as a weird choice to fall asleep in the third row of my big TV taping? I mean, I'm not saying you and I are clearly sharing a comedic sensibility, but what the fuck brought you in here in the first place then? I mean, I'm all for sleeping. I'm sure I'd be sleeping watching you grow weed or whatever you do for a living, but I, I'm just trying to wonder why you opt for that. You know what I mean? At first, with the fucking lighting, I couldn't tell if that was like, if you were sleeping or if you were just like, if you were, I swear to God, for a minute, I thought you had like a fucking neck disorder and you were just, so I didn't want to highlight it. But fuck, that is, as if I'm not distracted enough, seeing a fucking sleeping Rasta man in the audience, I'm like, holy shit. I mean, I got a pretty good idea why you might be feeling a little groggy. But it is a little bit of a, you know, it does take the wind out from under my sails a little bit. It's not like I'm at the fucking shit can in Topeka. I'm sitting here in a theater in New York. Ideally, there wouldn't be a dude passed out in the front row. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? That's what we get paid for, to chimp around up here like monkeys and hope that no one passes out on us. <laughs> Enjoy it out there. It's your big night. <laughs> Why are you sleeping? <laughs> me don't know me got up early. Me got up too early for this shit, man. You know, <laughs> the sense of humor is a little different, bro. Are you Jamaican or just American trying to be Jamaican? <laughs> Jamaican? Doesn't matter. None of this is gonna fuck it. This is not normal. What's going on here? I'm wasting union time here. You know, I was, in, I was in Jamaica once. And I was on a, a glass bottom boat tour. And, and, uh, and the guy, as he's guy is, is taking us out there, he goes, you're gonna see all kinds of coral, but remember, no breaking and no taking of coral. All right, he goes, there's tree coral, like the tree. Brain coral, like the brain. But no taking and no breaking of coral. Remember, there'll be no breaking and no taking of Carl. 
you can swim around, you can look, you can take pictures, no breaking and no taking of coral. I said, excuse me, can we break or take any of the coral? And he goes, no, me just told you that. So it could be a communication issue. I like, I love, I'll tell you this about, about New York. I, uh, <laughs> I like uh, all the different cultures in America, you know, I think that's, that's what makes America great, you know, just, that's not it, but that's, that's something that people say. <laughs> but the accents are just funny, that's why I like them, you know. I was in a hotel, I called down to ask for the internet access code. I said, excuse me, what's the internet access code? And the guy goes, the guy goes, the code, you want the code to write down? You want the code? I go, yeah, what's the internet access code? He goes, okay, write it down. Is A as in apple? B as in boy, Y as in jello. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> sports, I think sports are way too important to people in America. Holy shit, it's like the new opiate of the masses. It just keeps people from, from realizing how, how fucked they actually are, you know? Let's face it, if you couldn't get drunk and paint yourself orange and brown every Sunday, you might realize, shit, I live in Cleveland. <laughs> How the fuck did this happen? How did I, how did I end up in this frozen shithole? I mean, you know, not, it's a nice place. I forgot that people from Cleveland will actually watch this. But I mean, it's cold and gray. You know, you look around at your family and your, your shitty little house that you can't afford the payments on anymore and, and your big bloated mess of a wife would waddle towards you with her front butt spilling out over her acid wash jeans. And, and you think, shit, I'm gonna go shoot myself, my pregnant 12-year-old daughter, right in the mullet with a nail gun. <laughs> you know, but you don't, because you got the big game to look forward to. Why do you think they held steroid hearings in Congress? Steroid hearings? Is that, is that a congressional matter with all the problems in the world? We gotta figure out why these baseball players are using... I mean, that's not a congressional matter. Shouldn't they have been figuring out why we sent the entire military into Iraq, looking for weapons of mass destruction that turned out to be two donkeys in a box full of sparklers? <laughs> before we... Before we figure out why, uh, why Barry Bonds' balls seem to be shrinking, is that really a congressional concern? They want to take batting records away from some of these guys because they use illicit substances. Yeah, but you know, they're entertainers. Who gives a shit? It's not a congressional matter. You know what's also an illicit substance? Crack. Crack cocaine is an illicit substance. No one's taking gold records away from Whitney Houston. So, I think, uh, this... This hero worship of the athletes, holy shit, you know, Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps on every commercial, you gotta see him. You know, he seems like a great guy and everything, you know, but he's kind of hard to look at with that, with that tree trunk neck and that little peanut head of his, his underbite and those jug handle ears. Like he's on every, I have to turn on the TV and go, he's on every commercial, he's on something for a hotel chain. Like, I love pillows. I love pillows. Fuck. Good to have some passions, Michael. I love them. <laughs> One for each year. He's in a commercial with a Rosetta Stone. That's a language program. It teaches you to speak foreign languages. He looks right in the camera and says he used it. When I learned I was going to Beijing, I thought I better bone up on my Chinese. Fuck. Bone up on it, like he's already got it down pretty much. Just needs to, just freshen up a little. Just a refresher to get that fluency in Chinese back. Like, when I learned. It is impressive that he can swim so fast with that giant underbite. There's no question about it. Seriously, that's got to create some drag, I would think. He's got to be like a sperm whale feeding on krill as he makes his way through the pool. And he seems like... A He's got all these books out. There's a book called Beneath the Surface. The look, beneath the Surface, what's, the, what's in there? What makes them tick? Could you imagine reading that book? I like swimming and pillows and smoking weed. He, he got so fucked over for that weed smoking. I will say that. That was ridiculous. Holy shit. They caught him smoking weed. They treated him like they caught him shooting heroin into the soft spot of a preemie baby's head. You know? Like, like, I like babies. It's fucking weed. 
It sends the wrong signal to children. Yeah, it tells kids you could smoke a little weed and still be the greatest swimmer in the history of mankind. It's not going to kill you. I like weed. Although, could you imagine? Could you imagine the size of the bong hits Michael Phelps must take? Holy shit, talk about bowl clearing lung capacity. You do not want to be sharing your weed with Michael Phelps. The Olympics, these Olympics were men's synchronized diving. Men's synchronized diving. Who would choose that as their sport? If you can dive, why would you not just be a diver? What's the, what's the added appeal? I like diving. But, you know, I also like cock, so... <laughs> in a perfect world, there'd be another guy there in a bikini bottom that I could practice with all the time. Just to copy and get exactly right, you know, watch on tape all the time. That sport couldn't be any gayer if they held it in Clay Aiken's anus. But... <laughs> China's a fucked up country in the first place. By the way, do we make anything in America anymore? Do we make anything in America besides porn and autistic kids? <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Everything... Everything comes from China and it's always poison and toxic, you know, poison toothpaste, poison dog food, toys loaded with lead paint, loaded with lead paint. Now, in fairness to the Chinese, they may have thought we meant no red paint, but <laughs> it's still bad. That country, that country is impossible to figure out. You know that the world's tallest man and the world's shortest man live 10 minutes away from each other in China? What kind of fucked up genetics experiments are going on over there? And the world's tallest man was used to save a dolphin's life. A dolphin in the Beijing Zoo ate something like plastic and they used the world's tallest man to reach into its stomach and pull the plastic out. What kind of mindset? Where would you even... Who would even think of that as an option? What, how, what kind of fucking zoologist? What kind, they're sitting there with a sick dolphin like, oh, we need a giant man. <laughs> There's no medical equipment. Is there a giant somewhere in China we can get? I'm surprised they didn't make him hold the world's shortest man by the ankles and just sort of dip him in. <laughs> hey, we got him. Got him. We got him. Huh. And when did we become such a, a, a nation of such, such self-important narcissistic douchebags that, you know, when it's your birthday now, you just think you can go to any restaurant and make the waiters sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> when did that trend start? That's the most irritating that used to be for children at Chuck E. Cheese. Now you can go to any restaurant. It's my birthday. Dance around or something. <laughs> Give us a little song, would you? Give us a little song. Go get me a piece of cake. It's my birthday. <laughs> you go to restaurants now, they got to break out in song every five minutes. I was at a restaurant the other day. The waiters had to go out four separate times to different tables and sing happy birthday. And holy shit, the owner comes out. And even the dishwasher's out there singing. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. It's my birthday too, but no one's singing happy birthday to me because I'm in the back washing dishes for 50 cents an hour, but somehow I'm the bad guy for taking away American jobs. What fucking job am I taking away? Who? Who wants to wash a fucking dish for 50 cents an hour? Okay, yes, arguably all of us coming over like this collectively lowers the labor rates in the country. We could debate it on those merits, but no, you're taking my job, you're taking my job, you're taking my job. What kind of fucking ignorant bullshit is that? You have to ask yourself, are you willing to pay the increased cost of paying a prevailing wage for some fucking slob to stand back there washing dishes? If it's such a fucking problem, why don't you just penalize the employers who hire us? Oh, because that will be politically unpopular. How old are you now? Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you.